Hello to each one of you. Bienvenidos, welcome. We gather together to celebrate the feast of the baptism of the Lord. Thank you for allowing us to enter into your home to pray and celebrate with you. As we gather to celebrate Christ's baptism in the Jordan, may we also celebrate our own baptism and the joys of belonging to the family of God. Our celebrant today is Father Chris. We begin our celebration in prayer. For the quiet intentions in our hearts and for the mass intentions of peace in our country that the spirit of Christ bring us together, tearing down the walls of division, fear, and anger. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now, where you are, please rise and greet those around you and join Candace, Trevor, and Joseph in our opening song. faith this holy day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sisters and brothers, the Lord is with you. And with your spirit. It's a wonderful time to gather as we close out this Christmas season, and so I dare say again, Merry Christmas. We as a church don't celebrate one day, we celebrate a season. We celebrate a life that has been given to us, a life that we celebrate, particularly this aspect of Jesus' life in his baptism. Today, as we prepare to receive the good news of God's immeasurable love for us, we're invited to recommit ourselves to consciously live the faith we have been given. We walk in faith together. We walk in faith together to ask God for forgiveness for what each of us need in not answering the call to live our baptism well recently. Friends, at this celebration of the baptism of the Lord, we are blessed to be able to welcome a child through baptism into the Christian community. So I will put my mask on and I will have this family come greet me in the front of the altar, greet us all in the front of our altar to continue our celebration. We need godparents as well. Excellent. Welcome, parents and godparents. It's good to have you here this day. What name have you given your child? Hold on one second. Let me get the microphone. There we go. What name have you given your beautiful child? Jason Thomas Cook. And what is it you ask of the church for Jason? Baptism. What do you got to say about that, Jason? It's good to see you. You've asked this beautiful child to be baptized into the life of the church. In doing so, you're accepting a powerful responsibility to train him in the practice of our faith. It's your duty to bring him up to keep God's commandments, to know what those commandments are, and to try and live them in his life. Do you understand this commitment? Yes. And God, parents, are you ready to help these parents in this important duty? Yes. Praise the Lord. Jason, hey, the Christian community welcomes you. 
into God's family. And so I make the sign of the cross upon you and ask your parents and godparents to do the same. Make a big air cross on you to keep distance. Wonderful. And you can return to your seats. Friends, we know at the beginning of every celebration, we are encouraged to remember well those times recently we've not lived our baptism well. We thank God for the mercy God has upon all of us, that God doesn't define us because of our sins. God loves us as we are. God gives us all renewed second chances. Praise the Lord. And so as a church in this glorious season, we pray God's glory as I bring the water upon us to sprinkle Reminder of our own baptism. Loving Christ, through the waters of baptism, you call us from the darkness of our own limitations and doubts into the light of your freedom. We are children of God. We are loved beyond all measure and filled with the gifts of your Spirit. Continue your transformation in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, 
and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and the nations that knew you not shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Juan. Queridos hijos, todo el que cree que Jesús es el Mesías ha nacido de Dios. Todo el que ama a un padre ama también a los hijos de este. Conocemos que amamos a los hijos de Dios, en que amamos a Dios y cumplimos sus mandamientos pues el amor de Dios consiste en que cumplamos sus preceptos. Y sus mandamientos no son pesados, porque todo el que ha nacido de Dios vence al mundo. Y nuestra fe es la que nos ha dado la victoria sobre el mundo. Porque ¿quién es el que vence al mundo? Solo el que cree que Jesús es el Hijo de Dios. Jesucristo es el que vino por medio del agua y de la sangre. El vino no solo con agua, sino con agua y con sangre. Y el Espíritu es el que da el testimonio porque el Espíritu es la verdad. Así pues, los testigos son tres, el Espíritu, el agua y la sangre. Y los tres están de acuerdo. Si aceptamos el testimonio de los hombres, 
El testimonio de Dios vale mucho más que ese testimonio. Es el que Dios ha dado de su Hijo. Palabra de Dios. Hallelujah, sisters and brothers, the Lord is with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. This is what John the Baptist proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens saying, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You may please be seated. So good morning, sisters and brothers. It is good for us to be here to celebrate Jesus' baptism and Jason's baptism. And I'm going to go down and talk with him. Hey, Jason. Hey, little guy. Hey, Jason. Let me get my glove on and we're going to talk to you. How about that? What do you think? What do you think? This is a very special day for you and for all of us. Hold on, let me get this. This just takes a little time. Hi, right, there's mommy and daddy watching you, making sure everyone's safe. That's mommy and daddy's job to make sure you're safe. Can I say hi? Blue finger, I know you don't use, oh hi, good to see you. Now we'll see how long you stick around. We got a message to share with you, Jason. Because uh, we like at this parish, if it's possible, to celebrate baptism of the Lord with a baby to be baptized. And today we have that day, so thank you. Thank you to your mom and your dad, and your godparents, and your grandparents, and your big brother for coming here today to celebrate with us. It's good for us to be here. It's good for us to support you and love you. And you probably don't remember the words that we talked about when we were at the altar the first time. We asked your mom and your dad to take over responsibility to share the faith with you. And you have no idea what I'm saying right now, and that's okay. That is okay. Say hi. Oh, thank you, hi. Good to see you. You know, your mom and your dad, and your godparents and your grandparents and your big brother, and all of us want what's best for you. We want to support you and love you. We want to help you to be the best you can be, to grow up to be big and strong. And then I made the sign of the cross on you as we welcomed you, as a reminder of that sign of the cross that claims you now, that claims your mom and your dad and your grandparents and your godparents and your big brother. We all walk in faith together. And the people who are praying with us at home, people you don't even know right now, but we all love you and we care deeply about you and we want to see you to be the best you can be. But being signed with the cross means that you are welcomed into this community, the community of Holy Name of Mary, the community of the Holy Catholic Church. We are just celebrating with you. And I know you don't understand a word I'm saying, and that's okay, because you are getting this message early in your life so that you can 
have it as a good foundation to grow big and strong. So this guy Jesus, that I made the sign of the cross on you about, his daddy, like your daddy, is teaching him to be big and strong, teach him to follow Jesus, teach him to be the best little boy you could be. And that's what Joseph, who was Jesus' daddy, did. I know. Whatever it is over there, you're trying to pay attention. I know. You're doing great. Jesus' daddy and mommy brought him to the temple like you were brought here to the church to present him, to offer him to God, to help him receive God's spirit, and to trust and trust their lives, his life, to Jesus. Yeah, he's on the move. And that's okay. I'm just going to keep you talking. You're on the move. Go see Grandma. You know who you want. And Mary, his mom. Welcome back. Mary, his mom, wants what's best for you. And Mary took what's, what's so special in her heart and held these holy things. And when we were in the temple, there were some people who said some amazing things about Jesus who... They wanted him to say, now he's the fulfillment of everything that Israel was waiting for. And Mary would have her heart hurt because it's not always easy to raise children in this world. They were speaking very honestly from their own perspectives, their own faith. And you're a climber, and that's okay. You are trying to, you're getting bigger and bigger as we speak right now. Isn't that great? You know, Joseph's daddy taught him to be a good carpenter. We don't know much about that part of his life, but Joseph was a carpenter, and he taught him to be a good one, like your daddy and your mom are going to teach you to be big and strong and grow to be the best young person, hopefully older person, that you can be. Jesus, when he was baptized later on in his life, he didn't need to be forgiven sins. He was so special. But we have baptism to give you new life and to give us all new life because we need God's help to grow to be our best. You know, Jesus was plunged into the water, Jordan River. And I don't get to do that to you because of COVID restrictions. You don't even know what COVID is. You'll grow, you'll learn what that is when you grow big and strong. And, but we get to pour water on your head and it may be cold and it may get a little messy because that's how baptized life is. It's a little messy sometimes. But with God's help, you will know how much you are a loved person. Isn't that great? You are on the move. Can I say hi? Hi? How do we do this? How do you pick up your hand and say hi? You got the camera because you know it's all about you. And right now it is all about you. It's about all of us too. All of us trying to renew our life in Jesus and trying to be the best people we can be. Now when Jesus was growing up, he was just an ordinary person. He wasn't anyone special until he tried to figure out how God was trying to make him grow and be strong and focus on trying to help his people. And with God's help, your parents, your godparents, your whole family, we're going to help you. And all these people who you don't even know, we want you to be big and strong and help you be the best young man you can be. That's going to be some time. But right now we go a day at a time to help you even as we speak right now. Now, Jesus lived only three more years after he was baptized. And I don't know how long you're going to live. I hope a long, long time. you got a lot of energy. I'm sure you're going to be just fine. But we're going to love and support you. Now, you're about to be baptized. And with God's help, you're going to be putting that baptism into action and being the best person you can be. Because Jesus needed to stand up for his people. We don't know what you're going to be when you grow up. You could be the President of the United States. You could help cure cancer. You could be a truck driver. We have no idea. We have, you could be anything you want with all of us loving you and supporting you. But try to be, as Jesus did, try to be best behaved as you can. Listen to your mom and dad and your grandparents and people who care about you. It's important to try to be the best you can be. There are going to be people and situations that want to take away this powerful message you're hearing today. They want to say, oh, you're not as good as the church says you are. You sometimes make mistakes, and you have to be defined by those mistakes. You learn it now. You're hearing it really young as your young life and reinforced by your parents and godparents and people who love you. You are a beloved child of God. 
no matter what. And I hope all the people out there believe that about themselves, that each of you are beloved children of God. And the baptism Jesus received is the same baptism you and I are baptized into. And can you hear that same message that was open from the heavens? You are beloved in God's sight. You, sisters and beloved brothers, are beloved in God's sight. We've all made our share of mistakes. You haven't yet. With the help of God, you won't, but you probably will. This is a part of what we do sometimes. But our mistakes do not need to define us. Our mistakes help us grow to be appreciate the good people we are and the good people around us. You know, Jason, I know there's not one thing you've understood I've said, and that's okay. But hopefully, everyone watching and everyone praying with you understands how much you're cared for and you're loved. I read an inspirational poster a long time ago that has some words that might help you as you grow and might help us all as we grow in our lives of faith. A winner is always part of the answer. A loser is always part of the problem. A winner always has a plan of action. A loser always finds an excuse. A winner always shouts out, let me do that for you. And a loser proclaims, that's not my job. A winner sees an answer for every problem. A loser sees a problem for every answer. A winner says, it may be difficult, but it's possible. A loser says, it may be possible, but it's too difficult. You're going to be baptized into the life of Christ. And we want you to be the best person you can be. And we want you to know how much you're loved and how much, how much you can help be supporting answers for our world. Even as sometimes you're not going to get along with your brother, it happens. But you're going to be growing big and strong. Yes, you are. You are big. Look how big you are. And being the best little boy you can be, be the best young man you can be, because you are loved, and that love is going to take you amazing places. Just that hopefully it's taken so many people who are watching you and praying for you, have been loved and cherished by the Lord, that we can know our true identities as daughters and sons of God. Jesus lived one life, and he did what he could with that one life. And you too, Jason, are living one life, trying to do the best you can with that one life. Right now you're doing it in your way, like the baby you are. And No, I'm not coming to you, says Mama. Okay, fine. Oh, so big. You are so big. Sometimes things just don't need words. Let's just watch and pay attention. Remember, this was you and me, friends, a short time ago or a long time ago, innocent, but empowered by the Lord. So as we celebrate this baptism, we remember our own baptism, a baptism God has inaugurated us into, a baptism that reminds us how much we're loved, a baptism that reminds us it doesn't matter one word I say on this thing. You have to know it in your hearts, and all of us have to know it in our hearts. Let's try to know it today. Amen. Well, thank you. That means Father, stop talking. I can do that. I can do that. We need to continue. And so I need your parents and godparents and you. We're going to go stand up there and we're going to continue initiating you into the life of faith. How about that? Parents, godparents, you come here to present Jason this child for baptism. By water and the Holy Spirit, he is to receive new life from our God. On your part, it's your constant care to raise him up in the practice of our faith. To do what you can to show him the right way. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, and friends, if our faith makes us ready to accept this responsibility of helping them, we renew our baptismal vows. Friends, do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, and our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of God our Father? You don't want people talking for you. You want to say it all yourself, and that's okay. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is the faith of the church, a faith we are proud to profess in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, and so we in faith say, Amen. Is it your will that Jason would be baptized into our faith? You can place his head over the font. Jason, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we, the church, say, Amen.
friends, we rejoice in the welcoming of a new member into our Catholic Church and of our faith in the Catholic faith. <clears throat> Having professed our faith and renewed our baptismal vows, we can raise up some of our needs and cares to our loving God, asking God to guide us in faith, asking God to never forget us. Faith. Friends, we can ask our loving God to guide us and fill us in mind, body, and spirit to renew the gifts of the Spirit within us, inspiring us new ways to show his mercy to others and so we can pray for what we need and for the needs of sisters and brothers. Our response is, we place our trust in you. We place our trust in you. you. For all who continue to be the light for us, our families and friends, our doctors, nurses, medical workers, law enforcement, firefighters, all frontline workers who continue to lay down their lives for us. May they be protected, renewed, and strengthened by you. God, our source and center, we place our trust in you. That we continue to be the light to another and a light for those who are searching for direction. May our works of compassion will lead them to Christ. For our 117th Congress, we pray that each member, that they make decisions that uphold the law of our Constitution and that they find ways to work together for the good of our nation. God, our source and center, we place our trust in you. For an end to the divisions in our country, in our cities and in our homes, divisions based on political parties and political leaders that Christ may be the center of our lives. God, our source and center. We, we place, place our, our trust, trust in you. For the sick among and in need of healing and for those who care for them. For those who have died and for their families who grieve in the recent loss of loved ones, that they find comfort in God's immeasurable love God, our source and center. We place, we place our, our trust, trust in you. And in faith, sisters and brothers, we can present our own needs and cares to our loving God in a moment of silence. God, our source and center, we, we place, place our, our trust in you. God of life, in baptism we became part of a faith-filled family which turns to you in prayer at this time. Thank you for being a God who hears and answers prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, friends, that your sacrifice and mine may be made acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and good of all his holy church. Lord, accept the offerings we have brought in honor of the revealing of your beloved Son so that the oblation of us, your faithful, may be transformed into the sacrifice of him 
who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, the one who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Friends, the Lord is with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and truly just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us, and by your spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring good news to the poor and encouraging us to be that same good news in our day and age. United with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Santo, 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 Santo es el Señor. Lord, you indeed are holy, the source and fountain of everything good for us. Send afresh your spirit upon us, your people, upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they will become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving you thanks and praise. Bread he blessed, broke, and shared with them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the meal was ended, he took the chalice. He again gave you thanks and praise, and he shared the chalice with his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior. Save us, Savior. Savior of the world. Savior of the world. For by your cross. For by your cross. And resurrection. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life and chalice of blessing, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember us, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Jason, we remember your deceased loved ones who are praying for you right now, and all our deceased loved ones who are praying for us all to live our baptism well. Welcome them all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her devoted spouse, with the apostles and saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. we rise in faith. We rise in faith to support each other in trying to live the baptized life we've been gifted with as best we can. So many of us were like Jason, whose parents and godparents spoke on his behalf, but it takes time to claim our baptism as our own. Having done so, having been done so because we celebrate this day, we pray these words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from all things that are evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours now and forever. Friends, the peace of the Lord is with you always. Peace we have as a gift to share with each other. For us in person, peace of Christ. For people celebrating with us virtually, may God's peace, particularly the peace of this Christmas season, continue to dwell in your hearts. Friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Somos tuyos, oh Señor de nuestro anhelo, tuyos somos hoy. En tu vida, muerte y resurrección, tuyos somos hoy. Oremos, let's pray together. Somos tuyos, oh Señor. Tuyo 
And friends, if I shared in the, as I've shared in the past, it is no small privilege that I understand I have and I have to share with the few people presenting this and providing everything for this Mass that we get to receive the body and blood of Jesus actually in communion. Uh, but we believe in faith. Your willingness to come and pray with us and celebrate with your hearts, uh, when there's a spiritual communion you are receiving. Not the same, but as close as we can get in this pandemic time. And so we pray together. Lover of our souls and gentle companion on our journey, we have opened ourselves to receive you in your fullness into the very depths of our souls. As you take root in us, stretch the boundaries of our hearts and minds. Increase in us as we decrease. May your holy presence in us be reflected in our thoughts, words, and everyday works of love, bringing light, healing, and compassion through us to a world in great need through Christ our Lord. I'm sure those things we are wishing that as Jason grows and matures that he will be a lover of souls, that he will know how much he's loved so that he can love other people. A few announcements by me before we conclude initiating you, Jason, into the life of our parish family, into the life of the Catholic Church. Oh yes, we do have more prayer books and calendars for you. Um, if you were to call the office, no knowing that we're closed right now, we will do everything in our power to get those to you. Um, with God's help, we are going to get those into our hands and we're going to hopefully pray and pray for this COVID number to come down and pray for each of us to wear our masks properly and do the next right thing so that we're ever closer to coming back to worship in church. Let's see. So I hope you were helped and supported by in remembering your own baptismal promises as we initiated Jason into the life of our church. So let's conclude our prayer, friends, by these last rites that we initiate Jason into. Hey, Jason, God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as tired as you are, has freed you from sin and given you new life and welcomed you into the holy people. He anoints you with the chrism of salvation. May you know yourself as an anointed person and put that anointing into practice, making this powerful sign of the cross upon you to be reminded your definition of who you are as a child of God. Parents and godparents, I ask you to receive this light. Receive the light of Christ. A light you as parents and godparents are called to keep burning brightly in this beautiful child and in Jack with Jack helping because he's going to be a great helper, right? An excellent helper in raising his big brother, his little brother. See that this light is kept burning brightly in his life. Continue to shine with your example so that he gets it through our, not just our words but our actions as well. He is clothed in a white garment, a sign of his new life. May that be kept spotless through our witness and example, and may God help you be the best little one you can be. And we call upon the love of our God over these parents and godparents, praying first over the parents. We ask our people at home to send your loving prayer upon these parents. And with God's help, they will be the best parents they can be in a very confusing world that we're living in. Guide them, help them to follow the gift of the Spirit, and share that gift of the Spirit on their children. And God, parents, continue to do your work of supporting these parents, of being the best witnesses of faith you can be. Continue to be the light of Christ to those whom you meet. Friends, we pray. Eternal God, guide us in faith this day. Help us as we celebrate Jesus' baptism to remember our own baptism and to know how powerful we are in Christ. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Friends, the Lord is with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we're done, except to welcome this newest member of the Catholic Church in our faith, Jason Thomas Cook. Praise the Lord. Yay.
you may or may not be aware, when we prepare the masses like the ones you've just celebrated with us, uh, they're done a few days before you're actually viewing them. Uh, it's edited and put into an amazing product that has helped us pray as a parish community during this pandemic period. I'm eternally grateful for our dedicated team members who make this recording possible. As you saw, I enjoyed sharing a very different homily than I usually do, talking directly to baby Jason on the day of his baptism, and hopefully encouraging each of us to celebrate our baptism well. But it can seem artificial, because as we were taping this Mass, the civil unrest was going on in the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Perhaps if I had known that, my message to baby Jason and to all of us might have been a bit different. Friends, our rights to protest and speak out against real or perceived wrongs in our nation is a right that given to us by our founding fathers and mothers. We're wise to use our civil rights well in this amazing nation that we are blessed to be in. But my insights are churning, friends, about the civil turmoil that's ensued in the wake of the election on November 3rd. For those of us who are believers that Jesus Christ is our Savior, not in any political figure, not alliance, alliance to any political party, that we are called to treat each other as children of God. Each of us has to respect each other's dignity, and this needs to be upheld and respected no matter what other aspects of life divide us. We are a hurting nation, but we are a blessed nation. With God's help and the support of our Blessed Mother, who is the patroness of our country, we can protest our discontent and reach conciliatory agreements about how our country moves, moves forward. As the pastor of Holy Name of Mary Parish, friends, I urge us to find ways to come together, pray for each other, particularly for the healing of our nation, and to enter the civil discussions we need to continue to do to make our nation even better than it is. We are blessed to belong to this nation. Um, your insights probably churning as much as I in these past days since this major unrest at the Capitol building. We put it all in God's hands, asking God to guide us, to support us, to love us in ways that perhaps we don't know how to love ourselves. Give us your strength to believe we can and we will work through this, hopefully not gloss it over, hopefully come to real unity and peace in this great nation. Give us strength we do not have by ourselves. Help us to believe in this Eucharist that we have prayed through and in, the Eucharist that supports us as Catholics, the Eucharist that gives us our identity as believers. And uniting that identity with the united identity of who we are as citizens of the United States we can entrust it all to your loving care. All this we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen.